Hello and welcome to Ask GMBN Tech. This week we have something slightly different. We've got an Ask Geometry special. We're joined by Dale from Nukeproof, who is hopefully gonna be able to field some answers to your questions. So without much further ado, let's get into it. So first question from a man called Stuart Jordan, and he says, is a Nukeproof, is a Nukeproof bike actually Nukeproof? And if not, is this covered under warranty? <laughs> so maybe getting a bit bogged down in semantics there, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> yeah, nothing's nothing's nuke proof to be honest. Yeah, um, I was gonna say it'd be like imagine that, like you know, the only thing left after a nuclear disaster. Yeah. Oh well, that, there's that, there's still that reactor kicking about. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. well, to be honest, that's the only way really to find out. Um, <laughs> but not, but not seriously. Yeah, we, we just we try. Like nothing's indestructible, but mm. we always try and um, look after the customer and. Um, be sympathetic because yeah. things like nuclear um, explosions do happen to yeah. people. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we try. We, we know, like we we are we're all riders. We uh, if somebody uh, lands big drop, mm. you know, they're just riding their bike at the end of the day. So yeah. I'll try and sort them out. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome, man. Sweet. And next, we've got a question from Isaac, and he says, geometry and frames are designed for specific fork or shock lengths. How much does increasing or decreasing fork length affect the geometry? Is it more affordable to update a fork than it is a frame? There is that number, I suppose, of like, probably I'm maybe misinterpreting it, but they used to, you know, 10 mil of fork travel is half a degree. Is that actually kind of grounded in truth or? Yeah, that's that's actually the, the rule we'd go by. It's, um, yeah, it's half a degree for 10 mil, pretty much. Um, so normally, yeah, we get asked this question all the time. Going up 10 mil, um, it's no problem. Um, once you start going to 20, that's full degree, you know, mm. you're starting to affect the handling and, and even climbing ability of the bike. Yeah. Um, and going, going down, we'd always rather go up because you'll, you know, if you've, your forks get 10 mil more travel, it'll also have more sag, so um, that works okay. Yeah. Um, sure. But going down and travel, down 10 mil will actually have negative effect on the, on the handling. Yeah, this is something we get asked a lot and it's something I always feel, you know, somebody who says has their mountain bike and they want to make it burlier. Mm -hmm. and they say, can I put a, literally sometimes it's, can I put another 60 mil oh. of travel on? Yeah. And, you know, it's very easy for us to say, oh, don't do it. But obviously these people trying to make their bikes more capable. Yeah, yeah. And they're watching videos of people, you know, EWS riders and thinking, wow, I want to slice the action. Yeah. And then they're just wanting to get into it. But how, in your opinion, detrimental would it be what, what, what's the line? Is it, is it 10 mil? Is it 20 mil? Because where, where, I would say 20 mil, you can kind of, eh. Yeah. But people say 30 mil. Just like, once once you go past 20, you're, you're just affecting the whole balance of the bike. Mm. The centre of gravity moves off the back. You'll just end up, you know, turn, overturning three corners and stuff. Yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll just feel like a pleb. You want <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're doing it to make the bike handle better and, and more capable, but that's in you'll make it worse. Make it worse. <laughs> cool, well now we have that definitively because it's something we do get asked a lot and I think, we, me and Doddy were talking about it, I want to get an entry level hardtail and put a box on it yeah. and just finally, you know, to, to, ah, you know. <laughs> Next we've got a question from Matt and he says, do you think we will reach a point, or perhaps we already have, where mountain bikes are too slack, too long and too aggressive? Mm. With this new fad of down country where even perhaps your cross country bikes, 120 mil, yeah. are coming quite slack now. Mm -hmm. Do you think do you think there's ever there is a tipping point? There is a point and we've you know we've been doing a lot of sort of testing, putting angle sets in and you know, even starting off with a bike that's really slack and making it even slacker. It just it's you start to um well, there's I suppose there's all the different elements. Mm. But if, if you're talking about head angle, there's definitely a point once you get past Especially on, especially on an enduro bike, once you start going past 64, 63 yeah. degree head angle, it starts panning really badly. Just, mm. um, just everyone gets, the whole handling gets really floppy. Mm. And as soon as you start climbing uphill, it's really hard to just go in a straight yeah, line. Totally, you know, it's, yeah. um, and even on the way down, you have to be on the fork. There's a lot more stiction. As soon as you, the forks get stickier as well. You know, you're having to, you're not pushing directly down the fork, mm. more of a rake on the fork, yes. so you actually have to be on, the, you have to be a really good rider to get away with it actually, um, so you're actually alienating the guys that maybe wouldn't be as aggressive over the yeah. front and stuff. Um, I think that is really interesting what you said there, this trend of super long, low yeah. slack, yeah. and actually 
without trying to sound, you know, like kind of, I know all because obviously I don't, but you see people ride and the long, low, slack nature of their bikes isn't necessarily complemented by their riding style. Yeah, yeah, well that's, it's, I think, if you're a really good rider, yeah, you can get away with a really long bike that's really slack. Um, but even I'm starting to see, you know, even at the trail centres, you'll see the latest, you know, hard tail that's come out and it's really long, really slack, and you're going, can you just see the body positions of the guy around it? It's like, you know, the bike's too long for you. It's, yeah, yeah. So I think there's definitely a balance where if you're a really good rider, you can get away with it and it may be a benefit, mm. but you sort of have to cater for everybody. Mm. And at the end of the day, like, if you look at Sam Hill, like he's 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 still on a medium. You know, yeah. it's he could be on a, whatever size you want it, but yes. you know. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. Um, um, next question is from Joe O'Carroll, and he says, similar to veins to the last question, actually, where is the limit to seat angles? What, what would be wrong with a vertical one, as long as everything else was adjusted accordingly? You know, now it's kind of people are kind of nibbling, getting yeah, steeper and yeah. steeper. What What do you think is the? Yeah, even we've been testing with different seat angles and pushing, even sliding the saddle all the way forwards. Mm. Um, there is a, there is a there is I, we find this a bit of a sweet spot. There seems to be once you start going too far forward. Mm -hmm. Well, you're first of all you're shortening the actual yes the effective top tube mm -hmm. and to counterbalance that you have to push the reach out so yes you know you're end up with a giant bike and, and then chasing your tail yeah, yeah. and then I, I can make it work for myself but then when you get the XXL mm. you have this bike that's so long it's yeah. you know it's it's impossible to probably get around corners um, yeah and then also once you start going too far with the BB it, it just starts to feel strange you know you're I, probably stressing yeah. your knees more. I get knee stress. If yeah. I go from, I don't, I don't know what the exact number is, but with a modern trail bike, when it's probably, you know, 78 degrees, if I then slam the seat forward, yeah. it loads my knees in a way, I don't know if it's perhaps me not being used to it yeah. or whatever, but it does do something yeah. particularly uncomfortable to my yeah. knees. Yeah. So, um, because how much, how much effective difference is there on, this, on the rails of the a saddle, you oh, know, in terms of effect? Yeah. Is it um, a degree, would you think, something like that? It's more than it's. I think there's probably. I think from max forward, max back, and um, it's like thirty millimeters. So mm. that's probably nearly two or three. I think. Well, yeah, you know, that's a, that's from a big the part. extreme, but you never, you never run it all the way back. Yes, but you may run it all the way forward. Mm. So probably two degrees. You could, you could simulate. I think yeah. two degrees. Yeah. Nice. Next question from Bananas Lego Technician. Well, there we go. He says, why don't 26 inch wheels get used on mullet bikes? Surely a 29 up front and a 26 in the rear would be really fast and really agile. I mean, mullet bikes, bit of a buzzword at the moment. Production mullet bikes, do you think they'll ever be a thing? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I've actually been trying it myself. Um, on your Reactor, on your Mega or? Uh, on Descent, on Mega. Hmm. Um, Actually suits me. I, I, like we are definitely not going to push standards. Like there's enough standards out there, and it has to. If it happens, it happens. Um, but I think in the longer travel stuff, like if, like on downhill, on twenty nine inch downhill bike, the tire would. I, yeah. It's not actually the tire touch. You know, come up hitting the, the backside. It's actually you know you're crouching down, you're squashing jumps. Yeah. I keep getting buzzed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the on the backside, so. From our testing, I find I, I like the short back end, and also like the tire clearance. Mm. Um, but not, I, I don't know what's going to happen or not. Going to happen, yeah. I mean, it's. I think it's lots of people have reached for it. I think it, you know that Martin Mace thing originally, and yes, he was running a mullet bike in the yeah. US. Yeah. But because, but as soon as GT released a long travel 29er, that he perhaps felt more comfortable on, he's yeah. now on 29, 29. Oh yeah, and I think it's sort of yeah. sometimes a mullet bike is a good option, and I'm, yeah. I'm not saying it doesn't suit. And her mindset yeah. doesn't suit a lot of riders, but it is also a way to make a significant adjustment to something yeah. that is hard to adjust. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. traditionally we haven't had that many options. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have to. We can't just close our eyes and go, "Oh, go away," you know. It, <laughs> totally not go away. So yeah, true. We just have to. We have to test all the different scenarios and yeah. see see what works or not. Um, but I think the fact that. We haven't written it off, you know, it's, mm. I don't know. But I think it's quite, I think sometimes the way that the sort of mountain bike community poses the sort of the 
the, the people making the bikes as quite like, oh, the bad guy, almost in a way. Like, they don't do this, and they yeah. standards, standards, standards. And actually, what you were saying about, you know, well, actually, you know, with warranties, sometimes people have really bad luck, mm -hmm. but they have a yeah. person too. Yeah. And it's in the same way that I think people forget there are mountain bikers behind these companies. Mm -hmm. And it's not, you, you know, you probably don't wake up in the morning and think, hmm, if we could just get a really, really, really hard to track down headset for this next new bike, yeah, yeah. that's going to really improve it. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. Not, yeah. it's not as clear cut as that. Yeah. This next question is um, about an another big buzzword, fork offset. Oh yeah. Everyone is yeah. going bananas for fork offset at the moment. And Dan asks, are shorter offset forks just a marketing strategy or do they make a real difference? I noticed that your new Nuproof reactor uses just a standard fork offset. I was wanting to upgrade my fork and I was wondering whether I should consider a shorter offset. Now, for those kind of that don't know, offset and trail is kind yeah. of like quite a technical thing. It's not just one number, yeah. you know. And it can have potentially quite, a, you know, you see on World Cups, a, a mojo bringing that offset reduction system yeah, yeah. and lots of different crowns. You know, do you think that similar to when we had um, short stems and long top tubes, do you think a whole bike has to be designed around a certain offset size? Uh, yeah, so I suppose when it all came out, maybe like one or two years ago at short offset, mm -hmm. we were like, right, well, this seems to be happening and, you know, is it a good thing? And we, we were, you know, reading all the hype that was short offset gives you more trail and more trail is a really good thing and mm -hmm. so we went and got a load of short offset forks and tried to test and it, it wasn't working I, we just so we had all this, the sales pitch and it was like yeah this is great and, mm -hmm. but in reality it wasn't happening it wasn't yeah. we hated it um, <laughs> so effectively it just felt we put the short offset in mm -hmm. the bike I know the bike didn't get steeper but it felt steeper mm -hmm. And the, the reduced front centre made the bike... So I think from the offset and the reduced front centre made the bike feel steeper mm -hmm. and more nervous. And then even the very first climb we climbed up, it was it was just really twitchy. Twitchy, yeah. And we're like, this, this isn't what you know, it's meant to be happening. It's meant to be bigger trail figures. It's meant to be good. Um, so the whole trail, side of, trail figure side of thing, you know, the bigger trail, couldn't feel it, couldn't... So we thought maybe we'll get up to speed. So it didn't happen, but then we sort of went to the next level. We then uh, put angle sets in and slackened the bike out. That's when it starts it starts to take effect. Mm -hmm. So the bike needs to be designed around the short offset. Mm -hmm. The bike needs to be like one and a half degrees, like between one and one and a half degrees slacker to start with. Oh, wow. To make it work. Mm -hmm. And it's actually, it, it, yeah, it's a, it's a complicated one because when I was saying before about... Um, you know, bikes, the limit be begins 63 or 64 degrees, and it starts, mm -hmm. the bike starts getting really floppy. Yeah. The short offset counteracts that. Okay, well, so yes, yeah. the short offset allows you to run a slacker fork or slacker head angle, mm -hmm. but without the sort of yeah. floppy side effect. And then I suppose if you've got a slacker head angle, it allows you to have more stability at speed. Mm -hmm. Although that's arguably, arguably as well. Um, yeah. But it's all part of a very complicated puzzle. Yeah, it is also it's a huge puzzle. It had us really confused. So that's why the reactor mm. has a normal offset fork because we didn't go really slack on the head angle. Yeah, this is actually a question just in here. And it's actually a pretty good one. Maybe dishing some dirt. And it is from Jane Elif, Jan Elif, I don't know. Um, what's the strangest piece of bike geometry you've seen in the past 10 years? Bit, bit gossipy this one. But, uh, is there anything you've gone, oh my god? <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a few few bikes with a crazy steep seat angles. Um, I always think they look disconnected from the rest of the bike. Um, yeah, that was it. Um, Those Bionicons used to have a really strange design ethos. Yeah, as you, I, was, I was just thinking of that bike. That was the one where you press the button and the... Yeah, it was like Inspector Gadget. Like, yeah. Beep, 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 you know. Yeah, it was Google Gadget. <laughs> The front dropped and the rear lifted, and mm. yeah, so the theory was kind of there, but when you see all the extra pipes and hoses, and yeah. it's like, oh goodness, it, did, it um, was a lot to take yeah. on, eh? And nowadays, like, you have, there's usually a little lever on your rear shock, you can mm. flip this lever, and it does something it's, similar, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, it stops well, it stops the bike dipping mm. when you're climbing. So, because I heard with those with those Bionicon bikes, and I don't know if there's truth in this, 
But they came up with the theory and then presented it to other companies. And other companies were like, maybe, maybe not. They're like, oh, we'll just make our own then. <laughs> and that's kind of how it came about. And it was designed from that ethos. Yeah. You know, and it, you know, it was pretty cool. I, I only rode one once. Mm -hmm. It was it was cool. It looked yeah. different. Probably things have diverged mm. for some particular kind of yeah. valid reasons. But I think it was cool. You know, people have got to push that boat, and then we go, oh, well, actually, maybe that isn't yeah. the way. Maybe that is for you. And then we can go in the other direction. Yeah. It's, it's it's cool to see. I think I remember I on one of the bike shows and pressing the button. And... <laughs> Yeah. It's cool to see people thinking outside the box, and you know, and uh, you, know, they, they, you know, yes, it made production, but you know, even even as a concept thing, it can point you in other directions and make you think of you know different ways of doing things. Yeah, I heard, I heard Snoop Dogg runs a similar system in his low riding car. Just to, oh, okay. you know, it's actually massive, massive enduro fan. Really, <laughs> really is. <Yeah. laughs> and that's it. Thank you very much, Dale. Thank you for coming on, shedding some light. It was certainly an education for me. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Oh, my <laughs> pleasure. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.